This weekend, Bob Mincer's big band played a gig at Manchester Craftsman's Guild, that jazz oasis in Pittsburgh. It was a concert focusing on Brazilian music, some charts that Bob wrote with a special guest, Chico Pinheiro. Before the concert, Bob went to do a clinic at a high school in Pittsburgh. This is something Bob does on a regular basis. Manchester Craftsman's Guild also has a very strong outreach to the community. Bob is a wonderful communicator, really knows how to connect with an audience, and as you'll see here, he took care of business. My name is John Mayoni, and I'm the instrumental uh, ensembles director and music teacher for Winchester Thurston School in the Shady Side section of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a general music program. We have a jazz band. We have a number of uh, courses that also have some jazz involved in it, some jazz history. There are 37 kids in the jazz band. We have about 260 kids in the school. When I uh, was a high school student uh, uh, around New York, there was an organization called Jazzmobile, and they sent a quintet to, to our high school with uh, Blue Mitchell and Harold Land and Billy Taylor oh, wow. and Ron Carter and Grady Tate and that had a huge impact yeah. on me and I think on some level really pointed me in the direction of jazz music. Uh, I write a lot of large jazz ensemble music and we're going to record uh, a collection of songs that are inspired by the music of Brazil which has a very distinct, interesting uh, flavor to the music. And um, so part of us coming here and being involved with the Manchester Craftsman's Guild is uh, coming today to play for you, uh, just to, to give you some sense of what musicians, what full-time musicians do. <laughs> talk very briefly about what it is that's going on up here. Um, we, we learn these songs, which are part of the vocabulary of jazz, and the songs typically are from either a movie or a Broadway show. But another thing that is really important that I thought of as we were performing this song was after I was finished, you know, then as I was listening to Bob, almost immediately I was like, oh man, I should have done that, or something like that. <laughs> as we call it, jazz vocabulary, words, combinations, uh, melodies that fit on those chords. And you're putting all of that stuff together, um, and that's running in the background as you play. It's, and it sounds, it sounds kind of comp, sounds a little complicated, but once you've done it a lot, and once you've learned a lot of different songs, then just like, again, the analogy of having a conversation with your friends. It's something you don't even think about. You know, I'm kind of in between both worlds. I, I'm working out the pulse with the drummer, and I'm outlining the harmony. And I have to choose what I play very carefully. So that little shape that this song starts with is, is a jazz word, and it's something you could play on the tune we played before. Uh, in, in an appropriate place. Now, if you just played the notes by themselves without any inflection, it wouldn't really be jazz. It would just be... But what gives it this quality of jazz and this feeling and sense of swing, as we say, is uh, there's um, a rhythmical inflection with this triplets, like... So when you play... You do not speak like this where every word is exactly the same, do you? <laughs> Nor do you play that way. So, I mean, some, some words are emphasized, some words are emphasized, and you, the pitch goes up a little bit. In the same exact way, you, you, you know, accentuate some, some notes. <laughs>
The events here always have an impact. How lasting, we don't know, but I, at, it's really wonderful. And then I hear about even a lot of the kids that graduated, even if they aren't jazz people, one of their big memories of the school is of the jazz performances. Thank you.